Welcome to another video. If you are a beginner programmer or just starting out, this video is for you. I feel like we have a lot of really good resources for intermediate users for getting into NeoVim or coming from other code editors, but we all assume you have written some code before. And before making a video for actually getting started with NeoVim as a beginner, downloading a terminal, getting, getting ready there, downloading NeoVim, getting used to Vim motions, all that kind of stuff, I wanted to answer the simple question, if you are a beginner, should you choose NeoVim as your first code editor? Because for many people it has the potential to be the last editor because it can be whatever you want it to be. But should you even get started or is there easier ways? So um, without further ado, let's jump into answering this question. And in order to do that, I wanted to have a look at a couple of programming languages. These may not be the languages you start with or even those you should start with um, but those are just some of the examples of websites of languages which you might find like for example rust i have haskell python and c++ up here um, but what they all have in common some make it easier some harder is once you go through this getting started section here in rust for example it tells you how to install rust and i think rust is a really good example for this um, it makes it quite easy to follow along it tells you about tools. It does tell you about setting up, for example, VS Code, which is another popular choice to get started as a code editor. But I will argue later that starting out with an IDE may add a lot of unnecessary complexity that you don't really need to start coding. But then what we, we find is the first thing is you are expected to execute something in the command line. And we'll see the same for the other languages as well. So everyone sort of makes this assumption that you're already familiar with the command line and i wanted to shout out a nice resource for this which is called the missing semester of your uh, computer science education and they have a nice introduction to the shell and command line stuff they do even go into vim or you could use new vim as a drop-in same thing um, but i'm just assuming assuming you should probably watch the first two of those lectures to just learn about the command line and the shell because this is the prerequisite you need for everything. Um, if you go to another example, Haskell, for example, we have a nice getting started section. It tells you how to install the compiler. It tells you that you open GHCI on the command line. So it's expected that you are familiar with running shell commands. And then it tells you how to put something in a file and how to compile it on the command line. Uh, we got a Python, it's a bit harder to see. Uh, there is a getting started section, it's a bit more hidden, you go through there. Eventually there's, I guess, some documentation and a brief tutorial. And this tutorial also assumes, let's go next here, that you open up Python on the command line. So no default tutorial by a programming language, whatever you may start with, make the assumption that you are using a certain IDE, although sometimes there are helpful things for certain IDEs, like a VS Code plugin, for example. But you don't really need that to get started. Uh, let's look into another example. It's not the nicest website, but let's go through C++. We go here through tutorials. We want to learn about the C++ language. It tells us that there are some compilers and tells us the compiler takes our co code and compiles it. Yeah, that kind of stuff. Um, and then it tells you, okay, if you are using one of these IDEs, here are the setup instructions. And those will be different for each kind of IDE, but what always stays the same is the command line. So under the assumption of having the compiler set up already, you can always do it on the command line. So whatever language you learn, the command line is your friend. So it is natural to assume we could also just use a text editor to write our code that is accessible from the command line. So let's uh, do just that. As an example, let me open up a new terminal here and let me quickly navigate to a folder in which I just have some notes about this video. And let's do the example here. So it tells us that we should write off a C++ program. And I have not actually written much C++ before, so I'm just going to just copy this. And let's open NeoVim. I don't want to open my current configuration, so I want to open nvim minus minus clean which is how it would look like if you open it and i just write a new file main.cpp and now 
This is what NeoVim looks out of the box. And I will tell you just five commands you need to learn in order to get started and be productive for learning. It is not the most efficient, but this come, can come later. You can go in your own pace. NeoVim can be however complicated you want it to be. Um, the first thing we notice, we have this thing, and if we do letters, like random stuff happens. We are in normal mode. We want to go into insert mode, so we hit I. So the first thing you need to do, to do is learn I is for insert mode. Now, on, in a terminal, we can paste using Control shift v We have pasted something. And the next thing, second thing you need to learn is to get out of insert mode, you press escape or control C, both do the same thing, escape or control C. And now we want to save the file or write it to a file. So we need to learn that in normal mode, we can press colon to go into command mode. And now we press write. And if I type it correctly, we have write. I can also just type W and it will know that it's the only command that starts with w, so w will be the same as write. We have now saved our file. If I make a new terminal, we can see we have main.cpp here. This is the only thing we need to know. Let's move this over here. Now, what we need to know is how do we compile it? Well, it was on the previous page. We need to type g++. Then the name of our file. I'm just ignoring this other stuff. We don't necessarily need it to show what it's doing. And then we need to give it a name and it's compiling. We now have an executable called main. We can execute it and we have hello world in here. We can do the same thing in one step by just doing and end, which means if the previous command succeeded, we want to execute the second one. And now we just run this line every time we change our code. To change our code, all we need to do is go into insert mode. And for example, I want to add a new line here. Now back to normal mode, save down here, execute the previous line. And now we get a new line every time. And then the first lesson you usually learn when you're programming is something goes wrong. For example, I am missing this closing quotation mark. So I just go down here, execute, and then, oh no, the compiler complains. And you are ready to learn the first most important lesson, and that is to actually read your code and read the error messages of the compiler or interpreter. And here it tells us, okay, we are missing a terminating quotation mark character. That's quite easy. We can see it's on line six. We don't even have line numbers enabled in here, so that comes, I guess, when we configure stuff. I guess we, we should do that after this video. Um, but for now, we know where this line is, and we know we just add, go into insert mode, add a quotation mark. We save, and it should be good to, good to go again. Now, I think this is actually all you need to follow along with a programming book. You, of course, can try out different IDEs, and they give you different things. For example, if I open this in VS Code, make this full screen, it will probably tell me that there is a C++ extension which I can install. But um, you notice straight away that my screen is a lot more busy right now, there's a lot more going on, um, which we don't really need. Um, so now we don't want the pre-release version, just check this here, but now of course we get the nice features such as, oh, I guess we, we should get nice features such as auto-completion and hours and all the kind of stuff. And you can get all this in NeoVim. You just need to configure it and add it. And you can do so at your own pace. Um, and now we, of course, want to run this code. And we don't have a terminal anymore. So we would open a new terminal. And we type g++ something. And then we realize it doesn't work because uh, we are suddenly in our home directory because the terminal in VS Code does not open in here. But we know there's like a run button. So we say we want to launch our file and it doesn't work because we are not in a workspace. So we need to open a workspace. So you need to learn all these, edi these editor specific things that we need to open a folder now in, I guess in here, like open, open folder in here. And then it will probably like work at some point. 
but there's all these extra steps that you don't really need that they don't add any to anything to your understanding of learning c++ so my main argument is not that you shouldn't have nice things like auto completion auto completion is amazing for working faster it is really helpful for also learning a language when you already learn know some other language to get around the language features but it doesn't really help you learning coding for the first time and you can add this to NeoVim at your own pace. We'll go over configuring. It's straightforward, but of course it does require some configuration. So this is not about, oh, back in my days, we didn't have auto completion and I turned out fine. N no, like if you think everybody else has to go through hard times because you turned out fine, you did not in fact turn out fine. This is about making things easier and less complex, not more. It's about taking away all the unnecessary distractions and also taking away layers of abstraction that might confuse certain things. Eventually, this compile button is doing the same thing as the command line options, but it can never really encapsulate all the complexity. So sometimes it does the right thing, but sometimes it goes wrong. And when it goes wrong, there's, it's really hard to debug when you don't understand what's happening under the hood. And this will not happen if you know the pure commands. Learning programming from a book can only get you so far. So let's say you have gone through the first couple of chapters in your programming book, and then what you really need is a project, because projects are the best teachers. And in configuring NeoWim, you always get sort of your own personal project where you learn about your own configuration, your own needs. You are the programmer, but also the customer. And at the same time, you have a very helpful community, for example, on, on Reddit, that is very happy to help you answer questions um, because people are very excited. And this will naturally help you progress not only in Vim or NeoVim beyond just insert and command mode. It will also make you a better programmer by giving you a project that is fun and really low stakes because if you mess up your own configuration, no customer will complain except for you. So. It's a great way to learn and it's a great way to get started. And to do that, I will see you in the next video.